Tandad, Tandad de... Strum. Ha? Strum, strum. Of Tandad de Strum Upasrasya. Tandad de Strum Upasrasya. Yan Narayana Nirmitam. Yan Narayana Nirmitam. Maitreya Uvacha. Maitreya Uvacha. Nisham Yagadatam Evam. Nisham Yagadatam Evam. Rishinam Danushi Truva. Rishinam Danushi Truva. Tandate Stram Upasrasya. Tandate Stram Upasrasya. Yan Narayana Nirmat. Nirmitam Yannarayana Nirmitam Maitreya Uvacya Maitreya Uvacya Nisham Yagadatam Evam Nisham Yagadatam Evam Vishinam Danushi Druva Vishinam Danushi Druva Sandade Stramu Pashrishya Sandade Stramu Pashrishya Narayana Nirmitam Yannarayana Nirmitam Maitreya Uvacha Maitreya Uvacha Nisamya Gadatam Evam Nisamya Gadatam Evam Nisinam Tanusidruva Nisinam Tanusidruva Sandade Stram Upasrasya Sandade Stram Upasrasya Yannarayana Nirmitam Yannarayana Nirmitam Maitreya Uvacha Maitreya Uvacha Nisamya Gadatam Evam Nisinam Tanusidruva Sandade Stram Upasrasya Yannarayana Nirmitam Maitreya Uvacha Maitreya Uvacha Nisamyagadadam Evam Nisamyagadadam Evam Vishinam Tanusidruva Vishinam Tanusidruva Sandade Astram Upasrasya Sandade Astram Upasrasya
of the sages, Danushi, upon his bow, upon his bow, Ruva, Guru Maharaj, Sandade, fix, Astrum, Astrum, an arrow, an arrow, Rupa Shrishya, after touching water, after touching water, yeah, yeah, that way. That which Narayana, Narayana by Lord Narayan, by Lord Narayan Nirmatam, Nirmatam was made. Was made. Translation. Sri Maitreya said, My dear Vidura, when Dhruva Maharaj heard the encouraging words of the great sages, he performed the Akshman by touching water and then took up his arrow made by Lord Narayan fixed it upon his bow, purport by Srila Prabhupada. Dhruva Maharaj was given a specific arrow made by Lord Narayan himself, and he now fixed it upon his bow to finish the illusory atmosphere created by the Yakshas. As it is stated in the Bhagavad Gita 7.14, my eva ye prapadyante mayamitam tarantite. Without Narayan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, no one is able to overcome the action of the illusory energy. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has also given us a nice weapon for this age. In as stated in Bhagavatam, Dangopangastra. In this age, the Narayana Astra, or weapon to drive away Maya, is the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra in pursuance of in pursuance of the associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu such as Advaita Prabhu, Nityananda, Gadaha, and Srivats. Om Magyana Tamarandasya Yananjana Sadakaya Kasuran Mitam Yena Dasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Panchakalpata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Vyayavacha Padita nam pavane vyo vaishnave vyo namo namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Vasari Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so we heard in the previous chapter, uh, Dhruva Maharaj was fighting with the Yakshas and the Yakshas were using all kinds of mystic powers against him. By their mystic powers they had created many different illusions, like uh, wild ferocious animals were appearing in front of Dhruva Maharaj, tigers and lions and big ferocious elephants. And then they had meteors falling from the sky and all kinds of terrible things were falling from the sky and it was all falling onto the body of Dhruva Maharaj. So it was very bewildering even for a great personality like Dhruva Maharaj. So at that time the sages appeared, the great sages, uh, they had appeared to Dhruva Maharaj and they were instructing him to take the shelter of the Supreme Lord and to remember the holy name of the Lord. So here you see also that the continuation from this previous chapter that uh, Dhruva Maharaj he had been encouraged by the sages to take the shelter of the Supreme Lord. And Dhruva Maharaj remembers uh, how the Lord had given him some special arrow 
So he fixed it to his bow and simply by picking up that arrow and putting it to his bow, then immediately all the illusion and all the powers of these yakshas was removed. The example is given just like in the darkness of night. Everywhere is dark, but as soon as you turn the switch on, the light switch, then the light comes on and the, then the darkness is removed. Immediately the light comes on, it doesn't take time. So the, the same way, Dhruva Maharaj, by taking shelter of the Lord's Narayana Astra, he could remove all the illusion of the yakshas. So Srila Prabhupada compares this to the weapon which is given by Lord Chaitanya. And he quotes a verse from this 11th canto Srimad Bhagavatam, which is spoken by Karabhajana Muni to Maharaj Nini. Maharaj Nini had asked Karabhajana Muni, Karabhajana Muni is one of the nine prachetas. The nine prachetas are the sons of Lord Vrishabdev. Lord Vrishabdev had 100 sons. One of the, the most famous of Vrishabdev's son, sons was Bharat Maharaj. But there were also nine brothers called the prachetas who were also Paramahamsa Bhagavat devotees and he traveled everywhere preaching the message of Bhagavatam. So in the 11th canto is told how Maharaj Nimi had met with the, the Prachetas and he asked questions to them. And one of the questions which Karabhajani Muni had asked was he wanted to know about the Lord's incarnations in each age. So Karabhajana Muni described the Yuga avatars, how in the Satya Yuga the Lord is the white color, and then Treta Yuga the red color, and Dwapara Yuga blackish color, and the Kali Yuga is the a golden color. Actually it says the verses um, the, that uh, how does it work in uh, Kalir Doshanidi Rajan Asti Oh no, let's not do it. But that's a, a, it's another verse about Kali Yuga. Uh, the verse spoken by Karabhajana Muni, where this word Sangopangastra Parshadam is there. Kalir uh, Doshan. No, what's the verse? Who knows the verse in the 11th canto? Anybody know this verse? Nobody knows the verses? Huh? No, no, that's that's not the verse. The, the verse is predicting that the Lord's incarnate, a Krishna, it says, a Krishna sango pangasra parsadam yagnaye sankirtan praye yajanti hi sumele saha. Uh, I'm, I just forget that how the verse begins, but uh, uh, but that's the end of the verse. Uh, Anyway, the, it's uh, describing how the Lord appears and He is a Krishna. Krishna, He is Krishna, but He is coming in the color a Krishna. Krishna Varnam Tavish A Krishnam Sango Pandrasta Parshadam Yadnae Sankirtan Prae Yajantihi Sumedasara. Yes, thank you. So, like that. Uh, the verse describes how the Lord is a Krishna. Krishna means blackish, so a Krishna means he's not blackish. He's Krishna. Krishna varna tevish a Krishna. A Krishna. He's, he's, he's not blackish. He is coming in the golden color. Because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is coming in the mood of Srimati Radharani. He wants to experience what is Radha Baba. So because he's, although he is Krishna, his complexion has become the color of Srimati Radharani. Radharani's complexion is golden. Hey, Dr. Kanchana Gorange, Radhe Vrindavan Ishwari. 
So Srimati Radharani's complexion is a golden color. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna, but he's come in the mood to, or to experience the Baba of Srimati Radharani, so his complexion has become the color, the same color as Srimati Radharani, the golden color. And he's coming to experience that Radha Bhav as described in Chaitanya Charitamrita, that the Lord comes to experience this mood, which the mood of the gopis. The mood of the gopis and of course the head, the chief of all the gopis is Srimati Radharani. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and all of his followers, the Goswamis and like that, they all uh, cultivate the mood of the gopis. They all cultivate this mood of Vipra Lamba Seva, service to Krishna in separation. And in the separation from Krishna, they're feeling greater attachment to Krishna. Their attachment is simply increased due to separation. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to inaugurate the Yuga Dharma. The Yuga Dharma is the Sankirtan. In every age there is a process for self-realization. In the Satya Yuga it was meditation. In the Treta Yuga it was Yajna. In the Dvapara Yuga it was Deity Worship. And in the Kali Yuga it is Sankirtan. So, that is only the external reason for the appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That he came to an argument with the Sankirtan movement, but there were other reasons for the appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And in order to appreciate that, people have to understand the identity of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, that is the unique teaching which is here within our Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya. Now when you go to other Sampradayas, they have a different mood about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They don't accept Lord Chaitanya as being the Supreme Personality of Godhead. They will say, oh, he was a great saint, but they won't say that he was Krishna avatar. And of course, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came in that mood as a covered incarnation. He was covered incarnation. He didn't want to reveal himself as the personality of Godhead. Because he knew that in the Kali Yuga, there will be many imposters claiming to be God. It's very common. If you go to the Kumbha Mela, there's so many places in the Kumbha Mela and they're all saying, come and see the Yuga Avatar. Our Guru is there and he's the Yuga Avatar. And of course you go to that one who was from Whitefields at Bangalore and they have many songs and they always say Kali Yuga Avatar and then they'll say his name, you know. And so, like that, you know, there's so many people claiming to be Yuga Avatars. But to be actually the Yuga Avatar, they have to support, they have to support the position. There should be evidence, there should be references from scriptures. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, to support the position of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we have this verse from Srimad Bhagavatam, that's one verse. But there are other verses also, like in the Mahabharata, also there's a verse there which describes how the Lord would appear in the Kali Yuga and how he would take sannyas and he would renounce the world and he would be humble and he would uh, defeat the Mayavadis, like that. So the, the, there are other scriptural references to support the position of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Of course, other sampradayas, Vaishnava sampradayas, they don't all give so much importance to the Srimad Bhagavatam. 
we give great emphasis on the Srimad Bhagavatam. Other Vaishnav Sampradayas, uh, they will speak about the Puranas, and they will speak Mahabharata, they will speak Ramayana, like that. They won't give so much importance to the position of the Srimad Bhagavatam. So, it's difficult for us to actually present Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in a, in a place where there's a lot of other Vaishnavas or even scholars. Scholars, you know, if you go into a university where they're teaching Asian studies or Hindu studies or something, you know, they, they're also very, they're very cautious about describing anyone as being an avatar, you know, because they're scholars, you know, so they, they look at everything in a scholarly way. Uh, when Tamal Krishna Goswami went to study, uh, to do it, he, you know, he wanted to study uh, Asian studies and he went on to write a PhD. So uh, when he was studying at the university, if he brought up anything about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and described him as being the avatar or the personality of Godhead, they would say, well, that is your own sentiment. That is not supported with any uh, philosophical evidence. Like this, you know, they, they, you, you have, we have to be very cautious how we deal with the people outside, outsiders from our own tradition. They all have their own different opinions. But here, Srila Prabhupada is presenting this word Sangopangastra. The, 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 the Lord Chaitanya or uh, Lord Krishna is coming in the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he's coming along with his associates and with weapons also. Weapons to propagate the Sankirtan movement. And what was Lord Chaitanya's weapon with, by which he propagated Sankirtan? It was things like Madanga and Kartals as well as his very attractive features, his very special features, his beauty. The Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was very tall and very extremely attractive that everyone loved him so much. They were so attracted to him and so attached to him. So that was one of his uh, weapons by which he could change the hearts of the materialistic people. That simply by seeing him, people would be attracted and want to be devoted. This is the power, just like we read about Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna, people would just see Lord Krishna, which be overwhelmed by his beauty, his attractive features. So similarly, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was like that. The people were so attracted to him. And of course, he would sing also very beautiful songs. He was singing beautiful songs about the pastimes of Lord Krishna. And he was very fond of singing Hare Harai Nama Krishna, Gopal Govinda Ram Sri Madhusudan. This is how Lord Chaitanya began the Sankirtan movement with this very simple uh, song which he used to sing. And when he would go through the forest of Jarakanda, then he would chant Krishna, 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 eh? That song which is there, which is a, it's in the introduction of the Krishna book, so these are two songs which Lord Chaitanya used to sing, but of course he also used to sing the Maha Mantra, and he was chanting also on his beats. And he was very, very well read in all the scriptures, because from the Bhagavad Gita it says, Vedanta Krit Vedavid Eva Chaham. By all the Vedas I am to be known. Indeed, I am the author and I am the compiler of the Vedas. 
So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, being non-different from Lord Krishna, he could reveal the meaning of all the scriptures and he could explain fully the meaning of Vedanta, which he did to people like Prakashnanda Sarasati. Lord Chaitanya went to Banaras and there he met with the Mayavadi sannyasis. Of course, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not initially meet them. He went there to Banaras and he was simply doing Sankirtan. He was simply dancing and chanting in the streets of Banaras. Have you been to Banaras? You go to Banaras, you know the very narrow streets there. Very narrow streets. It's, there's no big wide streets there in Banaras. It's all very narrow streets. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was there dancing in these streets. Chant on his own. You can just go for Sankirtan and chant. And the Mayavadis, the, the, all these uh, Mayavadi sannyasis, the Chankaracharya sannyasis, because that's the place of, ben Banaras is their place. The Mayavadi sannyasis, they like to go there to Banaras. It's the place of Lord Shiva. And the Mayavadi sannyasis, they like to be there. And the Buddhists are also there. It's not really a place for Vaishnavas. We Vaishnavas, we don't very much like to go to Banaras. There's nothing really there for us. Although you could say, because it's a place where Lord Chaitanya went, so it has some significance now, because of Lord Chaitanya going there. But otherwise, we don't go to Banaras. We, we wouldn't like to spend time much there in Banaras. But we have a temple there now that the Lord is trying to preach there. But anyway, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went there to Banaras and he didn't associate with the Mayavadi sannyasis or with the Buddhas. He simply did his Sankirtan. He went there and chanted and danced. And the Mayavadis, they were criticizing him. And they were criticizing him that he is a sentimentalist. And people often criticize us when we go for Sankirtan. They think it, it is a sentimental display. Oh, just sentimental. Sing some songs. And you put your hands up in the air. And you dance. And people think it is just sentiment. They don't appreciate what actually is taking place in Sankirtan. That it is a very spiritual experience. So this Sankirtan was inaugurated. It wasn't really inaugurated, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu brought the Sankirtan out of the temples. Because before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's time, the Sankirtan was the chanting of the holy name was only performed in the temples. And before Mahaprabhu, the chanting of the holy names was only done by the brahmanas. If you were not a brahmana by birth, you were not supposed to chant the holy name. You were not supposed to read the Vedas. You have to be born a brahmana. You have to be a smarter brahmana. And you want to hear the Vedas, you go to the temple and you get a brahmana to do it for you. And if you're not a brahmana, you're not supposed to. So that was one of the criticism, criticisms of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Now the Mayavadi sannyasis, they are all brahmanas. You have to be a brahmana by birth before you can take sannyas in the line of Shankaracharya. So the Mayavadi sannyasis, they are all prominent by birth. And they oppose the giving of the sacred thread to people who are not born in Brahmana There, there was a, a big criticism against Ashula Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada that he introduced the giving of the sacred thread to people who were born 
away from the Bra outside the Brahmana caste. But Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati explained how this is done on the basis of scripture. And Sanatana Goswami had quoted the scripture and in the scriptures it is said that just like bell metal can be transformed into gold by an alchemical process, in the same way anyone who is properly trained and initiated by a bona fide spiritual master can become a Brahmana. So this is the scriptural evidence which is given to support giving the sacred bread to people from outside the Brahmana families. And we see there are many people who are coming in the line of Brahmanas, born Brahmanas, but they don't follow Brahminical culture. They, they say, I don't know, we are Kali Yuga Brahmanas. <laughs> we eat meat, we eat everything, we drink everything, we can smoke, do all things. They say, no, we are, we are Kali Yuga Brahmanas. This is their idea. So, of course, this, this is rejected. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give mercy to everyone. He is, of course, called Mahapadanaya Avatar. He is giving freely love of God to everyone without discrimination. And Lord Krishna also in the Bhagavad Gita says, Striyo Vaishas Tata Sudras Tepi Yanti Parangatim That even though one may be of low birth, just like women, in the Vedic culture, the woman's body is considered low. But even one may be low birth, like women and Vaishya and Sudra, they can attain the supreme destination if they take shelter of Lord Krishna. They can achieve the supreme perfection. So birth is no barrier if we have surrendered fully to the service of Krishna, we have taken shelter of Lord Krishna. Because in the Kali Yuga, everyone is low-born. It is also said, Kalo Sutra Sambhavaha. In the Kali Yuga, no one is Brahmana by birth. Because nobody follows the samskars. And you ask these people who say they are Brahmana by birth, you ask them, did you but did your mother and father do all the samskars? They don't know. They have no idea of these samskars. What you're supposed to do to be a brahmana by birth requires strictly following all of the samskars. Then you become brahmana. If you didn't follow the samskars, you're not brahmana. And the Kali Yuga, actually there are no brahmana. Everyone is low-born, but they can all be elevated by the chanting of the Holy Name and by the mercy of the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Everyone can be delivered. They can come to the higher platform. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, oh, well, the Lord comes in every age. Other ages he had weapons, just like Lord Rama. Lord Rama, of course, is not Yuga Avatar, Vila Avatar, but he had weapons like his bow and arrow and he, his astras to kill the different Rakshasas. And we know Lord Krishna, Lord Krishna had Sudarsan Chakra and he was using his Sudarsan Chakra to kill different demons. And in the Kali Yuga, the Lord comes giving mercy to everyone by the Holy Name. Paramakaruna Pahudvijana Nidai Gora Chandra Sabha Avatara Sirasiramani Kevala Ananda Kanda That these two lords are very merciful. Paramakaruna Pahudvijana Nidai Gora Chandra. Here we say Nidya. Uh, 
Nittai Goranga Roy. Right? Nittai Goranga Roy. So, Paramakaruna Pahu Pichana, Nittai Gorachandra. Sabha Avatara, Sarasiram, of all the incarnations, they are the greatest because they are giving this process which is Kemala Ananda Kanda, simply joyful. In other ages, the Lord was killing the demons. But in the Kali Yuga, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is making the demons into devotees. And he's giving this joyful process, the chanting of the holy names. So this is the Narayana Ashtra in the Kali Yuga, the Sankirtan movement. Prabhupada described it as the machine gun, right? You have people come with their guns, got you, got you, right? But if you have a machine gun, do, 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 do. <laughs> shoot everybody. Everyone gets the mercy. So that is Sankirtan. When we go out on the, the Rati Yatra, sometimes in the Rati Yatra we have very nice Kirtan, and everyone is in ecstasy, feeling the nectar. So, like that, this is the machine gun, the Sankirtan. Everyone is becoming joyful by the chanting of the Holy Name. So this is the weapon to conquer over Maya, the illusion of the material energy. We go out on the streets, of the world, the cities of the world, we're going out into the most hellish, sometimes terrible, degraded places, and we're chanting the holy name, and we're very happy, very joyful, chanting the holy name. This is the Sankirtan movement. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come, this external reason to establish the Yuga Dharma. And the internal reason to appreciate that because he's Krishna himself, Krishna wants to taste the pleasure which the devotee gets. Because the devotee, particularly the gopis and particularly Srimati Radharani, they are getting the greatest pleasure. Pleasure even greater than Lord Krishna. And Lord Krishna considered that I, I like to enjoy. I want to be the supreme enjoyer. But she's getting more pleasure than me. Just like the man likes a woman. So the woman likes the man. But she gets also pleasure when she sees that the man likes her. When the woman sees that the man also likes her, then it gives her more pleasure, more pleasure than the man's getting. So, Lord Krishna understood Srimati Radharani was enjoying more pleasure than he was enjoying. Srimati Radharani gets pleasure seeing the wonderful qualities in Krishna. And she also gets pleasure in, you know, she's attracted to Krishna naturally. But she gets also special pleasure when she sees how much Krishna likes her. That's a special pleasure. And Krishna thought, She's enjoying more than me, hundreds and thousands of times more. Her enjoyment is so much more greater than mine. And that is why Krishna comes as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because he wants to experience the pleasure which the devotee is getting. And he's coming in that mood to experience that Radha Bhav that special bhava which Srimati Radharani experiences in her loving exchange with Lord Krishna. So that is the internal reason for the appearance, the confidential reason for the appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But externally, 
and for the benefit of the common people, the Sankirtan movement is there, the chanting of the holy name. Let everyone chant the holy name and be purified simply by Sankirtan. All right, are there any questions? Yes? Krishna Mahi? How do we understand what is Lord Chaitanya's mood? No, it's always in tears. Oh, see, yes. like this picture here, Maharaj. Yes. How do I understand? Is he in the mood of Radharani or is he in separation? Yes, that, that is the mood of Radharani, separation. Srimati Radharani and the gopis, I said, Vipralamba Seva, right? The Goswamis had it and headed by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they were all experiencing that mood of separation from Krishna. Vipralamba Seva, feeling the separation from Krishna, increases our desire to be with Krishna. But he represents Krishna and Radharani Maharaj. Why is he always crying? Because he's in the mood of the devotee. He's in the mood of the devotee. He's not thinking I'm Krishna. He's in the mood of the devotee. So he's feeling the separation. He's, he's always saying, where is Krishna? Where is Krishna? After he took initiation in Gaya, then he came back to, uh, to Kanai Natsala. And in Kanai Natsala, he had a very mystical experience with Lord Krishna. Although he is Lord Krishna, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna, still Krishna appeared at Kanai Natsala and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saw him there and he was chasing after him. And when he came back to Mayapur, he was feeling that separation that where is Krishna? Where is Krishna? And he was lamenting and one day Gadarha said to him, Lord Krishna is in your heart. And when he heard that, he began to rip open his heart. He wanted to tear his chest and bring out his heart. And Gadarha had to restrain him and tell him to be patient. Lord Krishna is coming soon. Just be patient. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is, he, is showing that mode of separation. And we have to be anxious very, we have to have so much transcendental anxiety to become Krishna conscious. Gorgovinda Maharaj, uh, Prabhupada's uh, senior disciple, he used to say that he wanted to create a school for crying, to train us all to cry. In the nectar of devotion, Srila Prabhupada writes how you have to have so much desire, intense desire to become Krishna conscious that you will cry to get Krishna. When, when will I get Krishna consciousness? When will I see Krishna? So when we have that desire, that very strong desire, so much so that you shed tears, that is the qualification to become Krishna conscious. That you want something so badly, just like children sometimes, they want something. Oh, mommy, come mommy, give me, mommy. You know, they'll cry like that. You know, your mothers, you know, how your child cries. They want something. So we have to cry like that to get Krishna. But we want Krishna very badly. That is the qualification to become Krishna conscious.
Hare Krishna Maharaj just now you are describing a different avatar of Krishna for different yuga and <coughs> we can see in, in India also in Malaysia those who are known like Krishna, Rama so they have uh, some attraction and directly they can uh, uh, take some kind of worship but uh, when we talk about Lord Chaitanya, Gauranga and Yitananda Prabhu not many people are able to get that attraction so how actually we can uh, like promote or get this uh, uh, people to be attracted in that in their in their daily or in their activity? Well, yeah, like I say, most most people they're not familiar with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Lord Nityananda. They're not so well known. But by our own preaching. You know, we do also book distribution, we distrib we're distributing Chaitanya Charitamrita, and sometimes, sometimes also Chaitanya Bhagavata is also there. So let people read the books and hear about Lord Chaitanya, just by our own preaching. Just like when the Krishna Consciousness Movement began, people were not much familiar with vegetarianism was not very popular and Krishna also was not much known as well, it was very less, there was no talk about Krishna before Srila Prabhupada went to the West, we never had anybody really promote the message of Krishna. But since then, you know now, people are much more familiar, so gradually we keep preaching and let people know about these things. And gradually people will come to know more about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, about Nityananda. And we put the deities, of course, Chaitanya Goranga Raya here. You can explain to them who are these two great personalities. So we have to introduce Lord Chaitanya to them, let them know but the mercy of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yeah, we we're all in ignorance before, but by the mercy of the devotees, we become more enlightened. So we have to be willing to preach, go out and preach. When people come here also, we have to introduce to them, tell them who are these people, explain the deities, even Jagannath is not very well known. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes, my. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. So we have a lot of preaching to do. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Um, I'm trying to understand the position of uh, Gadadhar Pandit because we hear uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is in the mood of Radharani, and then we have Gadadhar Pandit who is supposed to be Radharani's manifestation. And we also hear that she is Bhakta Shakti. Um, how do we understand properly the mood of Kadadar Pandit? Well, it said even Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would go to Gadarhar. He would often be with Gadarhar. Gadarhar also was in, very deeply attached to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He liked to be with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He went there to Jagannath Puri with him. He lived in Mayapur with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took sannyas, the Dharma went with him and he moved to Jagannath Puri. And when Lord Chaitanya went around South India, the Dharma wanted to go with him. But Lord Chaitanya wouldn't take him. Lord Chaitanya sent him back. But Lord Chaitanya would regularly go to Gadarha Pandit and Gadarha Pandit would read Srimad Bhagavatam to him every day, practically. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu traveled around India for six years, 18 years were spent residing in Jagannath Puri. So for 18 years Gadarha Pandit was having association with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And uh, it said Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would learn from Shuk, from Gadarha Pandit, what was the mood of Radharani. 
because Mahaprabhu wants to cultivate that Radha Bhav. So what better person to teach him the mood of Radharani than Gadana Pandit himself? So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would associate with Gadara and learn from him about the mood of Radharani. Go ahead, I can hear you. I really don't know how to put this question, but I will still try. Maharaj, Queen Quinty, she just asked, she just mentioned, give me more and more calamities, so that Krishna will be in the midst of us. Now we have this calamity of COVID-19. It's all over the world. China's attacked again, and it's slowly opening the doors. Now Maharaj, 22 children have become orphaned because they have lost both the parents to COVID-19. So my question is, Krishna is still in the midst of us, or <laughs> how do I understand Maharaj? Yeah, of course. This, this is the material world, right? We're not in the spiritual world. This is the world of birth and death. And the calamities are endless. There will always be calamities here in this world. But the devotee accepts the calamities as an opportunity to remember Krishna, to become, to become closer to Krishna. Just like King Kunti said, let these calamities happen again and again. Because see, by, by these calamities we will see Krishna. And seeing Krishna means we will no longer see birth and death. So these calamities are good for us. They help us to understand that this world is not our permanent home. And don't try to be comfortable here. You're not going to stay here forever. You'll never be comfortable forever here in this world. So we do want to understand something of the mission of life. And it's not just simply making a comfortable home and trying to live here happily. There will be problems, there will be disasters, but the devotee will accept all of these things as an opportunity to go closer to Krishna, to make us more serious in our Krishna consciousness. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Hare Krishna, Shrimad Bhagavad Gita, Shri Prabhupada, Shri Prabhupada.